you to suffer just like Ashley will. Ramon Salazar, the 8th Castellan who resides in the Valley of Wolves, was absolutely evil. I mean, within the storyline in Resident Evil 4, we learned that he played a massive role that caused the destruction of the population around his proximity. This was even more pronounced when we learned about his family lineage, who had a heroic history as guardians, with the responsibility of keeping the Las Plagas parasite sealed underneath the castle where they resided. What's more was the aftermath of Ramon Salazar's actions, and the continued insanity he portrayed in the midst of this game, which comes in the form of his grandiose idea behind the power of the Plaga and his affiliation with the Los Illuminados, and his dominion over his henchmen who acted on his behalf of heavily scrutinizing those who are against him. I've sent my right hand to dispose of you. Your right hand comes off? So with that said, let's go ahead and cover Ramon Salazar's character in its entirety, where we cover in detail the repercussions of his actions, affiliation with the Los Illuminados, and the conflict against main protagonist, Leon Kennedy. You're nothing but an extra in my script. I don't ever remember being a part of your crappy script. <laughs> The Salazar family origin spans back many centuries, with his roots settled within this mountainous rural region in Spain. Here, they acted as castellans of the castle that loomed over the village community beneath it. And what's more, within this isolated population of the world was a deep reverence towards the Catholic faith that was ingrained with his people, who had led simple lives, with his main source of commerce was the production of farm goods for those beyond their region. Though there was something more pressing that the head of the Salazar family, the first castellan, had to deal with which was a cult known as the Los Illuminados, also known as the Enlightened Ones, whose mission was to help spread his belief of worshipping what they called the Las Plagas Parasite, a clear opposition to the Catholic-based community that presides within the rule of the Salazar family. This in turn would cause the execution of those who were affiliated with this parasitic pagan cult, with the first Castellan leading the charge of this crusade. This was even depicted in one of the files found in Resident Evil 4, showing what happens to those who are part of Los Illuminados, which upon further examination examination of this picture, we see some members burned at the stake and others awaiting their fate in the hands of the knights that surround them. And this crusade doesn't just end with the extermination of the believers of this cult, because ancestor Salazar had in mind to seal off the Las Plagas parasite in the cave network beneath his castle, with his family's duty from here on was to become the guardians who would prevent this organism from ever seeing the light of day. This was to ensure that the Los Illuminados wouldn't ever come back to power. The village population nearby was elated with a new about the first Castellan's actions, hence turning him into a folk hero. With his story of defeating the evil Los Illuminados and restoring peace was passed down from generation to generation, where it was noted that the grandparents would share this exact tale to their grandchildren while their parents were out at work, with this village community still holding the first Castellan in high regard even in the modern times. So that means that the Salazar's family name should be still in good standing, right? Well, that should have been the case, but instead, the complete opposite has happened. This was caused by the last remaining member of this family, who some in the village community have shown a disdain for him. But that begs the question, why was that the case, especially with the Salazar family's illustrious past? Well, let's go ahead and answer that question in the next chapter, where we explore the twisted mind of the 8th Castellan, Ramon Salazar. Ah, oh, what a touching moment we have here. All spoiled thanks to your interruption. Our meeting with Ramon Salazar occurs after the first third of Resident Evil 4. This happens inside what they called the castle that touched the heavens, also known for its grand architecture. Here he's shown as a man of small stature, claiming to be 20 years old. But of course, looking at the finer details of his character, we notice the sickly pale skin, the yellow tinged eyes, and his gray hair. And beyond the nuisance of his character's appearance is his personality, actions, and many other evil antics is what shines within this game, showing him to be a completely twisted individual who is fully devoted to the mission of the Los Illuminados and its leader, Osman Sadler, where he truly believes that he has found enlightenment after joining the very cult that his ancestor tried to exterminate. A file found inside of his castle recounts on this particular topic from Ramon's point of view, where it reads, 
For many years, the Salazar family has served as castellans of this castle. However, not everything is bright, for my ancestry has a dark past. Long ago, there was once a religious group that had deep roots in the region called the Los Illuminados. Unjustly, however, the first castellan of the castle took away their rights and powers. As a follower of this religion and as 8th castellan, I felt that it was my duty as well as my responsibility to atone for that sin. I knew the best way to atone for that sin was to give power back to those who we once took it away from, the Los Illuminados. As expected, it took a little time, but we were able to rejuvenate the once sealed Las Plagas. With this success, I was one step closer to the revival of the Los Illuminados. The reason why I released the Las Plagas from deep under the castle and gave them to Lord Sadler was not only to repay for the sins of my ancestors, but I felt certain that the Lord would make better use of this power to help save the world, to save those that have sinned with the power of the Las Plagas and cleanse their soul creating a world without sinners, the way it was meant to be. Once cleansed, they would become one of the many ganados where they will find their reason to live. And after the Lord has succeeded in creating the world in which he has envisioned, then the sins of my Salazar family will be atoned for. Though interestingly enough, this exact role that Salazar played was also recounted by his personal butler, where he documents the process on how Ramon was approached by Osman Sadler, where he has defied the very purpose of his family lineage that spans centuries back, where it states, Knowing that Senor Ramon Salazar has no family, Lord Sadler must have used his strong faith in Los Illuminados to his advantage to talk to Senor Salazar into undoing the seal of the Las Plagas once done by his ancestor. Senor Salazar would never do such a thing, unless he was in some way being used unknowingly. I should have sensed the Lord's dirty scheme sooner. I feel I'm partly responsible for all of this. I have no idea as to what the Lord is planning, but Senor Salazar was just being used. It is too late now, however. Senor Salazar has already taken the Plaga into his body. There is no turning back once the Plaga has turned into an adult in the body. The Plaga parasite will not die unless the host dies. There is no cure. Perhaps Senor Salazar may have been vaguely aware of the Lord's plan all along, but it's so hard to tell. Nevertheless, there's nothing I can do about it now. I have served the Salazar family for generations. I am prepared to continue my services until the very end. So from this memo, it does give a small picture to Ramon's past in some capacity, where we can insinuate that he lost all of his family at such a young age, leaving him to take the full responsibility of keeping the Plaga's parasite sealed underneath the Salazar castle by himself. I could see this resulting in his isolation, where he would lack the structure that would help create a healthy moral compass, leaving him open to manipulation to those with ulterior motives. Of course, now this comes back in full circle with Osman Sadler, and how he was able to convince Ramon to do the complete opposite of what his family has done for generations, removing the seal that kept the Lost Plagas from the world, granting Sadler access to this parasite. And from this point on, what would occur was truly sad, tragic, and terrifying, because Salazar would have the local villagers do the manual labor of excavating the Las Plagas from the underground cave network below his castle, and what they found was a fossilized form of this organism, which at first it seems as though no harm was paramount during this process, but what the unsuspecting villagers workers didn't know during their excavation was that they were inhaling the Las Plagas parasitic spores. The results of this was documented in Luis's memo where he states, the first Castellan buried the Las Plagas deep underground below the castle to hide their very existence. But when Salazar released the Las Plagas, no one thought he could bring them back to life because when Salazar found them, they were all just fossilized remains. Everyone knew that the parasitic organism could not survive without their host, that they couldn't sustain life on their own. But when Salazar and his men excavated the remains, it almost appeared as if the Las Plagas were just waiting to be discovered so that they could be resurrected. Several years later, unexplainable convulsions started occurring among the villagers who helped with the excavation of the Las Plagas. Then one day, all of a the sudden, these villagers turned into violent savages. They later found out it was caused by the Las Plagas. Although they appeared fossilized, they were able to survive the long years by lying in a dormant state at the cellular level, remaining in a spore like form. Apparently, during the excavation, the villagers inhaled the spores, and within their bodies, the parasites became active again. This is how the Las Plagas were resurrected. Even as I'm writing, the excavation of the 
Las Plagas continues. God only knows how many of these plagas have been resurrected, not to mention the countless number of ganados that have been created. Their inhumane activity must be put to an end. If they are not stopped, people around the world could turn into victims of this crazy cult organization. When you've acquired this power, you too will understand. Now, going back to Ramon Salazar, knowing full well of the repercussions of his newfound devotion to the Las Plagas and the Los Illuminados, how do you think he looks at those infected with this parasitic strain? Surely you don't think I'm the same as those diminutive ganados. If that doesn't tell you enough on how evil and callous he is, even towards those innocent villagers, his later antics can suggest further evidence of his twisted point of view. This was very much displayed throughout Ramon's interaction with Leon, where he would have him in dire situations of trying to survive the countless traps he has laid out for our protagonist. One in particular, after further examination, tells us that Ramon has used this specific trap countless times in the past, suggesting how easy it was for him to get rid of anyone at his leisure. Where's the satisfying sound of one's impalement? Interestingly enough, the ones who did die from this looks like his own henchmen, evidently showing his complete disregard to anyone, even to his own subjects. And speaking of subjects, one of Salazar's main deterrents against Leon was the hordes of zealots, cultists, and many other plaga-infected monsters. With each time Leon progresses from one stage to the next within this castle, Salazar acted as that checkpoint that eventually has us deal with the countless enemies in our path. It even got to the point of sending one of his two loyal guards to hunt after our protagonist, with this mini boss monster known as Verdugo. A humanoid insect-like hybrid who is fully devoted to Salazar, doing everything it can to protect its master and showing its full allegiance of servitude, which is why there's a working theory that suggests that these Verdugos were actually his personal butlers prior to being inoculated with the Las Plagas parasite. Again, reaffirming that last text we read from earlier about the butler's memo, where he stated, I have served the Salazar family for generations and I am prepared to continue my service until the very end. A clear example of this devotion was the one remaining Verdugo, who was willing to become part of the later mutation that we see with the final battle against Ramon Salazar. Monsters. Guess after this there'll be one less to worry about. Ramon Salazar was a host to a dominant form of the Plaga. This was given to him due to his high standing within the Los Illuminados and his role of helping resurrect this parasite worshipping cult. But what does having a dominant Plaga exactly entail? And what benefits does this provide him as one of the main leaders within the Los Illuminados? Well, the first was the clear cognitive ability that he still retained, where he mostly acted in his own accord without showing any signs of being under control from an outside force. This in contrast with the Ganados and and cultists that were heavily prevalent throughout this region, where you can hear them repeating certain phrases over and over, showing them to be cognitively hampered in some capacity. And next, the second benefit that Salazar has of having a dominant plaga is the ability to command those of lesser plaga hierarchy, which as stated before was his command of his loyal bodyguards, the Verdugos, and the many zealots, cultists, and monsters. Then the last benefit he has was the ability to assimilate with a queen plaga, found at the end portion of this castle journey. With this massive organism attaches itself to the wall, opening itself up like a blossoming flower. Here, Salazar allows himself to be taken alongside his loyal Verdugo. This results in this monstrosity right in front of us, where Ramon was able to be covered inside a carapace-like cocoon, with his Verdugo becoming an appendage that's able to perform an instant kill move. But even with this mutation, Salazar still retained his cognitive ability, tormenting Leon throughout this battle, taunting him of doing the exact same thing he did to Ashley. I want you to suffer just like Ashley will. Though in the end, our protagonist is able to defeat this monstrosity, where he'd be able to continue his mission of saving the president's daughter and destroy the Los Illuminados once and for all. <laughs> Give it up, Mr. Scott. It's going to take more than that to kill me.
new footage of Ramon Salazar's design has finally been revealed with the latest trailer from the Resident Evil showcase. With the imagery shown here comparing the two, we can see the direction that they want to portray this time around for Resident Evil 4 Remake, showing this new version of Ramon Salazar to look absolutely terrifying, where he still retained the grey hair, the yellow tinged eyes and the smaller stature, but twisted in a way that shows him to be a much more serious and imposing antagonist, and the overall aesthetic given off from this image shows a fashion of someone from the 17th century, with his hair akin more to the powdered wig used around that time, which indicated those who wore this piece to be in high class or occupation. Of course, this perfectly suits his character lore as 8th Castellan, with the remaining attire still stays true to his previous incarnation, but complementing the overall aesthetic of this late 17th century look. And speaking of staying true, the small snippet of dialogue we get from Ramon Salazar in the RE4 remake trailer, where he says, This could be his reference to Osmond Sadler and his devotion to the Los Illuminatos' vision for the world, which stays true to his original character as someone who was steered into releasing the Las Plagas into the world, still giving us a similar storyline of possibly being manipulated by Sadler into joining the Los Illuminados, which begs the question of us being able to still get the same information that we got from the butler's memo, where we saw things from his perspective. What's more was the fact that he seems to look a lot older than his previous version, where we covered that he was only 20 years old. Being that young could give credence to the easy manipulation that Sadler could impose on Salazar. But in contrast, if they are going with this direction of an older Salazar, how would this persuasion of Sadler work this time around with the 8th Castellan? Because you'd think an older Ramon would have some resistance to betraying his family duty of keeping the Plaga sealed under his castle, though seeing how this would play out has yet to be revealed. But in the end, the remaking of Ramon Salazar looks absolutely amazing, and I can't way how this new version interacts with Leon, making you wonder if they'll still retain the back and forth banter prevalent throughout the castle portion of RE4, especially with a darker and more serious tone of approach to his overall character design. Last but not least, we can't forget to mention Salazar's loyal Verdugo shown here, still depicting them to be completely imposing with their grand stature, which we know from the original version they stood at least 8 feet tall, so even in the remake this aspect still remains. Anyways, what are your thoughts about Ramon? Salazar, and do you guys like how he looks in the upcoming Resident Evil 4 remake? Please let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. Also, if you guys enjoyed the content, then please feel free to like and subscribe for more videos like this in the future. Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching, and as always, you guys have a great rest of your day, and this is Hey Deva, and I'll see you guys on the next video. <laughs>